Hello everybody, this video is gonna tell you everything you need to know about Omega cards. I had spent uh, approximately probably four to $500 total on Omega cards by now. I know it's ridiculous, don't even bother telling me I know it. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is basically teaching you the mistakes I made as well as explaining everything in Omega cards. So there's some very, very important distinctions in Omega cards that they don't explain. There is a lot of things in this game that they purely don't explain um, on the gotcha side of things, as well as the character mechanics, etc. And so I'm essentially wasting my money so that way I can then go on this channel and explain it to you. It is a long con plan. I'm hoping that I produce value for you guys on this channel. You guys reward me back with likes and subscribers, which will eventually make this channel self-supporting and all the money from this channel goes back into Marvel Future Revolution and I can make more content for you guys. That is the plan. If that plan sounds acceptable to you, consider liking and subscribing to be part of that plan. With that being said, I'm gonna go through and explain all of the Omega card situations now, and I'll let I'll tell you when exactly the most important part is once we get to it, because there's one part in particular that can like flat out ruin your cards if you don't know about it. So I think the very first thing we need to do is explain what exactly is an Omega card. So an Omega card is basically a tradable portion of your account that can go between characters. You have six slots available. There are different set bonuses. I'm gonna explain you the basics of the Omega card until we get into the advanced details. Omega cards come in two forms, meaning rarity and star rank. They are separate. When you see special, that does not mean it's a six star. When you see rare, that does not mean it's like a five star. When you see common, that does not mean it's a one star. You can in fact have five star and six star common cards and I have had both. I know Flo around here somewhere. I've leveled some five star cards to common ones just so I can use them as father for leveling up my Omega cards. You can level up Omega cards. We're gonna talk about that later and how that mechanic works. Now, one of the most common questions, just explaining the basics once again, is people say, what's the number on the bottom? That is your set. When you actually go here and you organize it by set in the bottom left, it's going to put them in the set uh, actual row, so 10, 11, and 12 are dark zone sets. Nine, for instance, is Sakaar, four, et cetera. So that way you can actually organize it by set and see which ones you have of the set bonus. That is all what that number means. If you're wondering what the number means with the color here on these ones, like five there, and that looks gold, four is purple, two is green. That is something called the uh, value or quality of the card is actually, I think, what they call it. So what can happen is you can row, and when it hits six star, it rows a quality of the card, which is again, another layer of RNG to say what level of six star card this is. All the way, you can see all the way down to here. I think it goes one to seven, if I remember correctly, seven being the highest, and the higher number of that quality, the higher all of the stats will be, okay? As far as I'm aware, the quality stat doesn't actually affect the dark dark zone sets or the set bonuses, but it does affect the fixed bonus and exclusive stats. Now, you may also wonder, what's the difference between common, rare, and special? Great question. So what common is, is common means when you look at a common card that you're just gonna get fixed effect, and then you'll get an exclusive stat when you reach to four star, okay? You notice how there's no bonus effect in here, whereas cards that are rare, and you can tell a card's rare besides just by clicking on it because it also has this silver border around the card as well. A card is always rare and it is always locked when you pull it if it's part of a set. There is no common cards that are part of sets, just a heads up. Now, special cards are something that typically cannot be uh, picked up Really, you have to purchase them out, straight out of the shop. You see, you click on it, says where the acquired, there it is. But the other reason is in order to get them, if you look here at the actual uh, special card itself, the bonus options, you get an extra bonus row. So you get another level of stats on top of the rare. Now, can you get a Black Widow that's a common? Can you get a Black Widow that's a rare? So there's crazy RNG? No, Black Widow only comes in special, okay? This card only comes in rare. There is golden cards, and you can tell if it's special because it's got this it's got this little like shine effect that goes on and it says special here. The special cards, and we'll show you in the shop just because I only have a couple of special cards, so I want to uh, show you what the other ones are. The special cards can really only be acquired in the shop. This is one thing I was wrong about. I thought everything in the game could be acquired free to play. These are something that I have not seen yet, that you can get these special cards to complete essentially PVP sets um, or the best sets in the game, for instance, 
without actually having diamonds to pull them. I guess you can still do it free to play because you could save up your free to play diamonds and then do it, but it does heavily benefit you to well to try to get these. Now, like I said, I've spent like $500 to try to get these special cards and the special cards themselves are very rare drop rate. I'm gonna do one 10 pull here just to give you an idea of the 10 pull and what it looks like when you get it. So here we go, let's skip through it. So here is a 10 pull. All of these are essentially garbage because if you look, we have one card here that's a rare. We know it's a rare because of the bonus option, exclusive stat. Now, this is a good one for you to know. Let's go, to, this is a good example for the next point. Then this is the point right here that can actually ruin your card. So this is the, perk up and pay attention if you're sitting back in your seat for a second, okay? We just pulled a new four star right here. So check this out. We have a new four star, Thor God of Thunder. So when you go to combine it, I'm like, ah, great. I would love this card, but you know what? I want this card on my Spider-Man, right? It says all bone effects will be reset when combined. So you click on, you're like, okay, great. Normally when you re-roll this, for instance, it's gonna re-roll and then both of these are gonna re-roll, okay? It's gonna re-roll the exclusive stat and it's also gonna re-roll your bonus option. It says all bonus effects will be reset when combined because it's talking about both of these. Now, it's kind of confusing because it says bonus effects, but this is bonus options, okay? It's not the same thing. Bonus effects are both of these. However, and it's really bad terminology, by the way, which is why I'm explaining it. So that's part of it. But the big, this is the big part that will absolutely ruin your card. Because when you re-roll it, you assume, because you re-roll in the exclusive re-rolls too, that like other things, when you put it on the uh, your other character. So if I take this four-star card and I put it on my Spider-Man, because I want these stats in my Spider-Man and the exclusive stats that only for my Storm is here, and I think, okay, I'm gonna five star this on my Spider-Man, which I have done a lot of cards, by the way, until I've realized this. It will reroll the exclusive stat again, but it will still be Storm, even though you're on Spider-Man. So what that means is if you're on your main account, or even worse, if you're playing on your alternate account, okay, let's say you're playing on your lower level account. Like if I go here, right, I'm gonna actually show you so you know. So if I go here onto my Spider-Man, for instance, okay, and I'm like, Spider-Man, my new favorite character. I hop in here and I'm like, I wanna play my Spider-Man and while I'm just doing some quests or something, I get the itch for a little tin pull and I go to do the tin pull of the cards and I happen to pull the one card I still need. There's one card I'm still missing for my PVP set on Storm. So I'm thinking, oh, let me see if I can pick up that Omega card, which is a Spider-Man, okay? If I pull this card, on my Spider-Man, even though I'm trying to get this on my Storm, it will roll an exclusive stat right off the bat on my Spider-Man, and no matter how I try to put resources to re-roll it, that item is going to stay a Spider-Man exclusive stat, and I will lose a huge chunk of stats for every other character. This is not the way that badges work, this is not the way cores work, and this is not the way they explain it in their own manual. This is a huge bait and will 100% destroy your card set. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean, okay? So I hook on my Spider-Man. I actually did this and I lost a huge chunk. Look, you see these cards? Here's a special. You see how this one's five star, but this one's only four star. So I saw this here. Okay, and this is a PVP or a PVE, you know, villain damage, et cetera. I'm like, I'm gonna build this PVE set for my Spider-Man, help me level. So I combined a bunch of cards here to get the Star-Lord to five star, and look, it wrote great options here, but look at the exclusive stat from four to five, it stayed for Storm. And I was mind blown when I figured this out because this ruins the concept of being able to pull cards and move them to other characters. If you pull the top tier card, you need to then pull that same top tier card again on your other character to get the maximum stats. For that reason, Omega card is a huge rabbit trail of super cracking Cthulhu level expenditure because not only do you have to get the card, but you have to get the card for every single character. Now, let's talk about ways to get five star, four star, et cetera, to level up your cards in case you get them. So there's the combine feature. When you click on combine, it's gonna, I can't even do it because I have no cards, I've been combining them. But when you click on it, it's gonna open up and show you all the different rarities, okay? When you go to combine, it's gonna automatically crunch anything that is unlocked. And this is another part that can ruin your account. You see how this card's unlocked? This is a good one. 
I don't want that unlocked. I'm gonna lock it. You know why it was unlocked? Because if you go to squad and you go to card storage, look, you can't put locked cards into storage. You would think locked is to keep you from crunching it from the automatic crunching system, but they have it where if it's locked, you can't store it. Meaning you can move it to another player, forget about it, use the combined system and you lose your super important cards, okay? And you can get the important cards that are somewhat rare at a lower quality. You don't have to only pull them at the top tier quality right off the bat. So you can actually crunch like a $300 card automatically by complete accident. So please do not make this mistake. And this is why I 100% had to make this video now. If you're still wondering how crunching works when you combine something and you click on it to combine, you can use five other of the same rarity that are not locked and it will bring it to five star, which will then reroll the stats. When a card is six star, I'm gonna show you that now, okay? So I'm gonna swap back. When a card is six star, then what that will allow you to do is reroll all of the stats once again. So that way, if when you level something up all the way, you get rows you don't want, you're not locked out. So you can, once you get the card on the right person with the right set, even if it doesn't have the right stats, you can still reroll those stats as well as rerolling the quality. So there's double layers of RNG. So it is especially expensive because I want to show you. So when you go here and I go to the mega cards and I go here, if I wanted to put another six star in, I could, it would re-roll not only the quality on the bottom, that's a four, but it would re-roll all of these stats and the fixed stat will always stay the same. That's associated with the card. So it would re-roll the hit rate, the PVP damage decrease and the shock damage, and this could go lower. I could get a two quality instead of a four, for instance, and that would actually lower the overall bonus options of this. So you wanna find the sweet spot, four and five are like right in the middle. If it's a four or five right now, at this point in the game, I'm not re-rolling it, but this, this one came as a four. My Kingpin came as a two. I'm not gonna re-roll it yet because I just don't have a six star, but the Captain America one here also came as a two and it has a critical rate fixed effect, which means I wanted it to be a higher than a two. So I crunched up a common all the way to six star and threw it right into Captain America and re-rolled it, which I wish I didn't because I got garbage stats, but at least it went to five star quality and the critical rate itself went up, up, up. That's right, the fixed primary effect goes up with the quality of your card, okay? So it's double layers of RNG. You have to get the bonus option right, exclusive option right, pull it on the right character, as well as get the right quality. So it is quite a grind. For this reason, you want to basically farm cards every single day, even one star cards are important and you're gonna need them all. I now need this card and I need this card. I'm short two cards and I get to complete my set, but trying to get Spider-Man is a pay the wing gosh mechanic only. Yesterday I spent 14,000 gems just on my costumes. I only have 10,000 left. I'm over a thousand dollars in this game at this point. And that's literally all I can afford to do until this channel is monetized and we get some uh, actual views on here that will be paying. So in that aspect, I hope that the money I've spent in this game has gained you some knowledge at least on Omega cards today. If it has, please like the video and leave a comment telling me which part you learned. If you subscribe, that's even better. We only need like 30 subscribers. So if we get that on this video, that's gonna be a big win for me. I appreciate all the support. The channel has been going up, 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 and I'm, I'm gonna be no life in this consistently. So I'll see you guys in game.